This is the second lesson about modules. We made one last week and today we'll go more into the details on how we can define modules in Rust and also sub-modules and a couple of more features. This is a problem we usually have when we have a programming language understanding how can we structure the code in multiple files. So far we used a single main.rs file. Uh, this is not sustainable for big uh, projects. For bigger projects, like huge projects, there is something called the workspaces in Rust. Today we are just focusing on, you know, a little bigger projects that when one file is not, not enough anymore. How can we define modules what's the what's the keyword modules are defined using the mod keyword you can see it here you can also see here many different new keywords we see a pub which stands for public we have also this one which is use we'll see also what use is modules are used to define and control the scope so the visibility and the privacy this part is very important we'll have a slide later about also the privacy of the items the functions and the struct defined inside a module. Let's check the example. Let's see the structure. We can see some familiar files. We have a cargo.toml file. It's very similar to a package.json or requirements.txt for Python. We have a .gitignore. We have a main.rs file inside this src folder. And this is what we had so far. But there is something different here. In this main file, we see different and new keywords. We have this use create with also this um, double column structure and then we have this pub mod garden we'll go into the details of each of these lines but for now just let's just have a look we have this main file a garden.rs file inside this garden.rs file we have only this single line pub mod vegetables where are these vegetables if you open this folder here the code will be available no worries we have this folder called garden inside of this we have what is called a sub module so in this project we basically have um create root which is the main.rs file it's basically the first file the compiler looks into and then we have the garden module and then the vegetables.rs sub module that has something it has a struct which is public so it's publicly available on the module and also in the create root. So this is just to have an idea. And now let's see seven rules for modules, rules or concepts. The compiler always first looks in the create root file. This can be a main.rs file or in case we create a create library, which is a sort, this is not an executable, but it's a binary. When we create the project, we can create this using a dash dash lib option. When we create a project, we start from here. So the compiler starts from here and then it, it reads any other uh, sub module that we can uh, use. We can have, we can declare a garden module inside this main.rs. So main.rs and then we define a module. This is just to explain how this uh, module can be read by the main.rs file. And there are different ways that the compiler can have uh, to look into the actual code. We have the inline in a file, garden.rs, this is our case. Or we can also have inside a folder, a special file called mod.rs. In our case, we have the second option. So we have a main.rs file and then we have a garden.rs file. So this pub mod garden online 3 reads this garden.rs file that has another submodule. Number three, declaring submodules. Submodules can be declared in other files that are is not the create root. In a file which is not the create root, so not the main.rs file, we can define a submodule. And the structure is very similar to a module. For example, in this case, we have these vegetables submodule. And it's a similar structure. We can have an inline one. We can have uh, uh, this submodule inside the folder of the module or inside a subfolder 
of this uh, folder. You can see here we have this garden.rs, it's the number two, so we have uh, this one, and then it reads uh, this file inside the garden module folder. For someone it could be easier to have a mod.rs file inside a specific folder, but in this case I will have different files called mod.rs file. Usually I try to avoid this, for example, even when I create Docker files, I, I try to avoid having different files with the same name in the same project and having just the structure of the folder to define the logic. In a project that, had, that has uh, multiple Docker files, uh, I don't have uh, multiple files <laughs> called the Docker file in different folders. Rule number four, paths to code in modules. When we define a module in a create, we can refer to some code that is inside this module and we're using, we'll use something called the paths. And it's interesting that once we define this create somewhere, we can use the same crate in other places because they've been added inside this crate. You can see here on line three, PubMod Garden, the garden crate will be available in the whole crate. The use keyword, what's the use keyword? It's very simple. The use keyword creates a shortcut. It's a shortcut to avoid typing. The use keyword creates a shortcut to items. Items can be structs, functions, enums, and so on. Because we want to reduce the repetition, especially of long path. Check here on line one. We type use, create, double colon, garden, double colon, vegetables, double colon, asparagus. <laughs> Instead of typing every time create, garden, vegetables, asparagus, once we type use, you can create a shortcut and then we can just use, for example, here, asparagus. I think we can also add an S here, for example, SX, and then we can even change the name. In this case, I just want to use something uh, simple. You can see here, number one, use, and then we can just have this of the type asparagus. It's interesting because I can also control click and it also goes directly here in the definition. Very cool. I think that this is an extension, private versus public. So by default, and this is very important, the code within a module is private from its parent modules. The fact that a module is public doesn't make the functions inside that module all public by default. It's the opposite. They are all private by default. And this might sound strange, but uh, let's see an example here. To make items in a public model to be available public, you also need to add pub before their declaration. You see here, I defined a module here directly in the same file. This was just an example to simplify and also to showcase that you can also create a module in the same uh, file. It was the option number one. We have a public module called network for networking. And then we can see we have on line four, a function connect without pub here at the beginning, which does uh, the connection. And then below on line nine, we have a public function pub fn initiate connection. Why? This is of course a simulation, it's a demo, but just to let you know that when in the main function I want to initialize a connection, I'm not using the private function to establish a connection, but I'm calling the public function inside the module, and then the module might have something that is used inside the module. You can see here on line 10, we call the function connect. So the module network, of course, has the visibility of the function connect, but the external module, the main module, can't call directly disconnect. It has to use this public interface. This is very important if I want to structure the code. By default, the functions and items that are inside a public module, they're not exposed to the parent module, but they need to be explicitly public. This does mean that then the parent module can use them. Let's try to, to type this, calgoran-q, and we can see here connection established, initiating connection. If I try, for example, here to call directly this network connect, you see 
Rust Analyzer is already complaining here, I should get an error. Private function. So I can't call the private function connect in the module network. What about grouping in modules? Can we group code and functionalities for different modules? And why should we do that? We will see an example soon. For, for now, just let's just focus on the fact that you can use modules to organize your code for not just a better readability, it's not just about readability, but also because maybe I want to separate uh, responsibilities and uh, maybe I want to provide both modules on the crate, but I don't want, for example, a module to call other functions that are on similar modules at the same level. We have this uh, module called restaurant. Let's say that uh, we want to have uh, two different sub modules inside this restaurant because they are all connected to the restaurant concept and to the restaurant module. We want some functionalities that we can group in a sub module for the front of the house. It means that like all on the serving parts, uh, what it's like it's exposed to the public. And then we want uh, something private, like back of the house, so prepare food, uh, wash dishes. <laughs> when I use some of the functionalities here, for example, I can't have the back of house calling some functionalities that are of another module. This is just to structure our code better. And you can see we have a module inside a module inside a module. Module, restaurant. Inside of this we have two modules at, at the same level, front of house and back of house. Inside the front of house we have different modules, so hosting and serving. And for the back of house we have just at the same level prepare food and wash dishes. And then we can do cargo run dash q and we can see that we are calling all the functionalities based on the front of house i can't for example uh, do this because in this case for example these functionalities they are inside this module but they're not available and they are not uh, public you see also the visibility here something can still be done inside the module restaurant but from the outside <laughs> like from the app you can't choose what will happen in the kitchen for example the last example that i promised that i would have tried is this one let's say is the main one so we have this main file here we are using a sub module of garden so we are using main the module garden, the sub module vegetables. Inside this, uh, we have a struct. You can see the video uh, about uh, struct. And then we can try to print this asparagus that we define here in the main function. So let's try. We can type cargo run q, and we can see we have here the output. It's very important to understand everything that happened behind the scenes. So here we, uh, we have uh, uh, defined this uh, plant of type asparagus that it's not defined directly in here. We don't have a struct here in the main function as we did, uh, for example, in the lesson about structs. But it's inside a sub-module of the garden. For example, here I could have, uh, I don't know, all the vegetables. And for example, I can organize here all the struct, but let's like, think about having like... Uh, 10, 20, 30 types of different plants for a garden, it would make sense to have a place where I put all the types of the plants and then I do something else here on the main function. This is the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. It's very important to understand how to structure our code in different files, different libraries, different modules.